30-06 John here and today what I want to talk about is using the uh, 45 automatic for bear protection. There are uh, encounters that people have used the 45 automatic successfully to uh, stop bear attacks and I just want to review these uh, couple of uh, cases and also how to optimize using that cartridge and pistol for bear protection. So keep on watching and I hope you enjoy the video. So why use or carry a 45 auto for bear protection? Well, a lot of people, that's the pistol they have. They don't want to buy a big bore revolver. They don't want to buy a 44 Magnum. They don't want to buy a 10 millimeter. And I understand that. The 45 auto is not the best handgun for bear protection. For black bears, it does okay. For brown bears, grizzly bears, it's certainly pretty light. But if that's what the handgun you want to carry, then let's find out the best way to optimize it. First story I want to talk about, I found in Ammo Land uh, Shooting Sports News. It's from uh, January 3rd of 2022 and it's titled uh, Wyoming, a bear attack on elk hunters in September of 2021. There was a father-son elk hunters being guided and they uh, shot an elk. They couldn't find it, so they went out looking for it. And a lot of uh, lessons here to learn in this story. When they went looking for the elk, they left their rifles on the horses. This is rather surprising. The, they knew they were in grizzly bear area. And uh, at least the guide should have had a rifle with them. As pretty much everyone knows, uh, handguns aren't the best firearm for protection against bears. Uh, and you should have a... a properly loaded long gun. Their elk rifles probably had good enough ammunition, a lot better than carrying uh, most handguns. A guide had a Glock Model 20 10 millimeter pistol. In this story, they said the guide used 190 grain hard cast lead. Uh, Buffalo Board doesn't make a 190 grain hard cast lead. The only 190 grain uh, dangerous game load they carry is a mono metal all copper alloy type bullet. The story said the son had a 45 auto red dot sighted pistol with 15 round magazines. I don't know of any 45 automatic Glock, Smith & Wesson, SIG that uses 15 round magazines. Uh, and he also had hollow point plus P self-defense ammunition. The father had bear spray. The son sees a bear and the bear charges and the, the son starts shooting away at, with his uh, 45 automatic pistol. The father used the bear spray. Uh, the bear ran right through the bear spray. Bear slowed up a little bit. The son was actually shooting pretty good and pretty fast. Uh, he actually was able to um, run his magazine dry and change magazines. Uh, the guide who was a little bit off to the side, he had a move then he started uh, shooting at the bear with his 10 millimeter pistol. The bear slowed up considerably. Uh, the bear was, was within 10 feet of the hunters. Then the bear finally veered hard to the side, ran into a tree. The guide with a 10 millimeter so it ran up and uh, shot the bear in the head. Between the son with the 45 auto and the guide with the 10 millimeter, they shot a total of 31 times. They hit the bear at least 16 times. It seemed like the 45 auto, when it hit, wasn't really penetrating. Uh, the son had a plus P hollow point ammunition. It did slow up the bear, but it, it didn't really penetrate far enough. The guide with the 10 millimeter, his ammunition, uh, he had penetrating ammo. This story happened in Montana. Uh, this grizzly was shot nine, with nine rounds from a 45 automatic of a Glock 21. 
A man was working the edge of his property, tending his fence line, and a uh, brown bear, grizzly bear, charges him. He pulled out his uh, Glock 21, shot three shots with a 230 grain FMJ, uh, moved away about five yards, bear kept coming, he shot it three times again. He moved and shot it three times again. The bear finally collapsed. For ammunition, you don't want some type of jacket hollow point, even if it's a plus P, or they say it meets some type of special self-defense needs. You want a deep penetrating bullet. You want some type of, you know, Full metal jacket ball ammunition. I've chronographed some uh, full metal jacket 230 grain hardball loads. The CCI Blazer is sort of mild. It's only going 783 feet per second. The Remington 230 grain FMJ, that's going 823 feet per second. That's about what a ball ammo should be doing. Uh, the hottest one is this. Uh, Winchester USA Ready 230 grain. That's going 876 feet per second. These are all from a 5 inch barrel. If you're going to handle it, there's plenty of good data in the Hodgdon 2023 reloading magazine. If you could find the Western Powders hand loading guide, this is probably about 40 years ago before Hodgdon bought Western Powders. They have a whole 45 auto plus P section. Yeah, a lot of good 45 ACP plus P data here. Where to aim on a bear that's facing you, charging you. You want to aim at this triangle from the eyes down to the nose. Right, right in there. Now if you hit high, you'll hit the top of the head or probably skid off or whatever might stun them but you'll hit them to the shoulder that's why you need ammunition that breaks bones penetrates and breaks bones if you shoot left or right same thing let's we'll get off the side of the head here and you'll hit the leg the shoulder area here that's what once again that's why you need ammunition that penetrates and breaks bones And if you have to shoot, you can't scare the bear off, you want to get two or three good hits in initially. You don't want to shoot fast and not sure where you're hitting. You want your first several shots to really count. That will probably set the tempo and the tone of the rest of the encounter. And always be ready for follow-up shots. You might be shooting a lot more. It does happen where you leave your rifle uh, back and don't have it with you when you have a bear encounter but your pistol should always be on you just because that's all that i have for today everyone i hope everyone enjoyed this video everyone stay safe and have a nice day thanks for watching